What's going on guys? My name is Morgan and welcome to Season 1, Episode 10 of MDK Production School. Today we're going to be taking a look at automation, which is the process of telling a parameter to adjust automatically over a certain period of time. The beauty of automation is that once you set it up, it doesn't need you to actually interact with it. It'll just play the exact same way every time you play the song. We can use this to do really simple things like a volume fade or changing the panning from left to right of a certain instrument. Or we can really play around with it and get some pretty complex results, such as a lot of the cool bass growls that you hear in dubstep. The vast majority of those are just made by automating different parameters inside of the software that the producer was using. Automation is a really powerful tool, and it can quickly take a really boring track and add some depth and some life to it. Let's start by looking at our song right now. If we press play, we know that it starts pretty much immediately. There's not really any intro, nothing leads into it, it just kind of dives in head first. I think it would sound a lot better if we added an intro before this main part of the song. So first things first, let's select all of our patterns and we'll move them over four bars so that they're right here. And let's duplicate the piano, which is named lead for some reason. Let's change that. And we'll just let it play by itself for these first four bars. Let's also duplicate our bass drop and we'll put it right here, just so that on bar four, the audience can expect that something's gonna change at the end of that bar. Let's press play and hear how it sounds. It's a pretty simple intro, but I like where it's going. Okay, so let's go back to our step sequencer. And let's right click on the volume knob for FL keys. Go down to this option that you see right here that says create automation clip. Once you do that, you'll see it appear down here. And if you look in your playlist, you'll see that it's also right here. Automation clips are really easy to work with. You simply right click to place a point, right click on that point to delete it, and you can left click on any point to move it around to a different position. As you go up higher, the knob is moving further to the right, and as you go lower, the knob is moving further to the left. Let's go ahead and add a bunch of random points all over the automation clip, just so you can hear exactly what's happening. So you can hear the volume going in and out and in and out, and it's corresponding to exactly what's on this graph. Let's go ahead and remove all of these points, just by undoing them. And let's do something that sounds a bit better musically. Let's move this point to the start of bar 5, and let's put it at about 60%. And let's put a point on bar 3, and put it at 0%. Okay, now let's switch to our slice tool, and we'll split this clip right here and just delete that first part. And let's also delete the first half of that piano clip. Let's zoom out a little bit, select everything, and just move it back over. So we just shortened our intro so that it doesn't drag on so much. Let's take a listen to how it sounds now. It's pretty good, but it's tough to hear the piano at the start. You don't really hear it until right about here. So let's increase this first point to about there, and let's mouse over this dot in the center of the two points. This circle is where we can adjust the tension between the two points, which is essentially the slope between them. Just so that you can see a bit better, I'll lower this first point, and watch what happens when I click and drag this up. So now, rather than a linear path between the two, we have a much more exponential slope. Generally speaking, exponential slopes sound a lot more human and a lot more natural than just a straight line between two points. However, that doesn't mean they'll always suit your song best, so you want to make sure you play around. Let's raise this point up just a little bit more, and now let's press play. I don't know about you guys, but I like the sound of that a lot better than just the linear slope. You can also link multiple things to the same automation clip. For example, let's go to our bass, right click on the volume knob, and let's, instead of choosing create automation clip, let's choose link to controller. In this remote control settings box that opens, pay attention to this middle section that says internal controller. Click the drop down arrow and select your automation clip. Right now there's only one because we've only made one, but if we had multiple ones, they'd all be listed here. Once you've selected it, you'll notice that this text right here that says remove conflicts has turned red. This just means FL Studio recognizes that there's already another parameter linked to that automation clip. 
If we turn this on, we're telling it to remove that other conflict. So if I hit accept right now, FL keys would no longer be linked to this automation clip, and instead it would be replaced with the bass volume. If I turn this off, however, it means that both parameters will be linked to this clip. So now back in the playlist, let's duplicate our bass pattern, and we'll cut off the first half of it, and then stick that at the beginning of the song. Now, when we press play, we should hear both instruments fade in. One last thing regarding automation clips. If we add in something that's third-party software, for example, let's go back to Massive. When we right-click a parameter inside of Massive, it won't come up with that standard menu that we're used to, so there's no option to just go create automation clip. This will be consistent for all third-party software. However, it's still possible to automate any single parameter inside of here. So the first thing you want to do is click on the parameter you'd like to automate and just move it around a little bit. Then go up to the top where it says Tools and choose Last Tweaked. And now you can see at the top it says Massive Filter 1 Cutoff. So that's the parameter we tweaked. And you can now choose Create Automation Clip or Link to Controller. And from there, it's the exact same as everything else we just did. There's one other way you can automate things inside of FL Studio, and it's specific to the pattern that you're on. Let's take a look at pattern 10, which is our baseline. Go to the panning knob, which is the knob to the left of the volume knob, and right click on it, and choose edit events. This brings up our channel events screen, which looks quite similar to the piano roll. If you left click and drag, you can start drawing in automation into this section. So now if I press play and switch to pattern mode, you'll hear the bass panning from left to right, and it'll follow this automation. I'll make that a bit more extreme in case you didn't catch it. It's also handy to mention that if you go to the playlist, you can see that the automation is actually drawn in right on that pattern clip. So it's easy to tell which patterns you're using this feature on. Once again, keep in mind that editing events is pattern specific. So this automation will only affect the channel panning of the baseline and only on pattern number 10. If you'd like to remove it, simply press Ctrl A to select it all and then press delete. So there you have it. That wraps up automation in FL Studio. Keep in mind that you can automate pretty much 95% of all parameters inside of FL Studio. So if you tweak something and it sounds really cool, see what happens when you automate it. It might sound even cooler. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Don't forget, if you're interested in trying FL Studio for yourself, there's a link in the description to save 10% off all ImageLine software. When you're ready, click that next button and I'll see you in the next lesson.